welcome again once again to patio prayer and praise time ppp wisdom for the family we are so excited that you are joining us again today and we hope you enjoyed daryl last week when he shared two lessons and the first one was the blessings to the parents for training up their children in the way they should go and also he had another lesson um train your children not to be a servant which is so awesome because the word lets us know that the borrower is servant to the lender and one translation says the borrower is a slave to the lender so training up your children not only in biblical knowledge but also training up your children in wisdom concerning money but today we will be going a little farther and all of this was based upon Daryl's personal Bible study that God was teaching him about loving, about love from Matthew 22 and 37. You want to tell your testimony, honey? And then we'll let you say a little prayer and we'll go into the lesson today. Absolutely awesome. Yes, one day I was sitting in Bible study and just uh, uh, before the Lord and the scripture just become alive to me. Uh, out of Matthew 22, 37, which says, Love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, with all of thy mind. And uh, it just came to me to ask the Lord, well, Lord, if I love you with all, that word all just kind of stuck out to me. I love you with all of my heart, with all of my mind, and all of my soul. And then the next scripture said that to love your neighbor as you love yourself. I was thinking to myself, how can I love my neighbor? How can I love my wife? How can I love my children? I just, I don't get it. Lord begin to speak to me out of um, so that was Matthew I mean John 14 21 who was whoever has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me the one who loves me will love be loved by my father and I too will love them and show myself to them uh, they, they got another translation here so uh, the scriptures uh, says in the King James that I will come and manifest myself to him. And that's significant because we talked about the manifestation of Jesus was to destroy the works of the devil. So wherever you love God, you know that the power of God is going to come into that area and destroy what the devil is doing. I, I begin to look at keeping God's word in a particular area and focusing in on me loving God and the people that I, that I do the word in that area, they're the recipient of, of, of God's love and my love as a result of me just focusing in on loving God. So I thought that was absolutely awesome. So let's pray as we begin to go into the word of God and take you further now. We're going to talk about uh, how the word uh, works from the beginning. I don't want to say from the beginning to the end, but we're going to talk that process of what, how it takes, what it takes to walk in the love of God and keeping his commandments and seeing these promises come off the pages. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for our listening audience as well as for ourselves that you're giving us seed to sow and bread to eat your word does not go out void it accomplishes that what you sent it out to do and it prospers in the thing to where you send it now god we pray that the eyes of their understanding be enlightening that they may know what is the hope of your calling the riches of the glory of your inheritance to the saints. all good things we keep in the holy ghost bring back to their remembrance everything you teach them in the matchless name of jesus amen amen all right awesome Thank you, Lord. Thank you, honey, <laughs> for your testimony. But if you want to go ahead and go back and find that scripture in where you saw it, because that manifestation is very, very important. But today's lesson we're going to talk about, based on that scripture, loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, mm -hmm. and having his commandments and keeping them. Because he says, he who loves me has my commandments and we keep them. So we're going to be talking about every era of our life where that word is we need to find that word whatever we believe in god for mm -hmm. whether it's for finances whether it's for our children our parents or whatever whatever the words say we're going to find that word we're going to find that commandment and we're going to keep them mm -hmm. and as we keep them he's promised to manifest yes himself so if you want to find the end of that scripture, because I know I had it in another mm -hmm. translation, mm -hmm. and it didn't quite say that. Right. But we do know that faith is worked by love, mm -hmm. and love is keeping his commandments. So Galatians 5 and 6 says, mm -hmm. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision 
availeth anything. Circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. And to your point, we just spoke and uh, talked about the fact that love, we talk about loving, uh, loving the scripture, we talk about loving God. In other words, how do we keep God's word? Mm -hmm. And th th this is so powerful because keeping God's word is when it's time for you to do it. But we're going to talk about some prerequisites in putting you in a position to do it. Your frame of heart, your frame of mind, receiving the end of your faith. Your, your end of your faith should be you seeing yourself doing the word of God. Mm -hmm. But when you do it, here's the end of that. He said, he that have my commandments and keep it. Again, this is uh, St. John 14 and verse 21. He that have my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Again, as Rose alluded to, at the end result, Jesus manifested and he destroyed the works of the devil. Right. And that's First John 3 and 8. And that sounds like answer prayers. That's answer prayer. Because <laughs> what, what's hindering you now is the devil. We talked about that a little bit too. There's going to be opposition. Mm -hmm. He said, but be of great cheer. I've already overcome. Right. So, I'm going to let you continue. Yeah, because faith mm -hmm. is work by love. And it's really... I'm, really reminded of a pastor that we was listening to not too long ago mm -hmm. and he was sharing how to get your blessings and everything off the page right. pages and he says he was talking about how people always say well i'm believing god yeah well i'm believing god yeah but what, you but what are you believing <laughs> yeah because he upholds all things by the power of his word so if you're not believing a scripture or a word concerning that area you just have a no faith right because faith is work by love love is having these commandments and keeping them mm -hmm. so now it's finding that word on that situation you believe in God to uh, rectify for you or you need manifestation in and that's the word we're going to meditate on that's the word we're going to meditate and that's on. what and we're just going to share some of these things because this is how we've actually lived our lives right probably from day one right we're going to reveal the process the process this process is absolutely awesome I mean uh, praise God let's do this thing yeah I mean we can go because I, I can because you know we want to even talk about the fact that we knew that we were meant together. We're not going to tell our testimony how God actually put us together, mm -hmm. you know, because we had no physical attraction. Mm -hmm. it, that, it wasn't like that. We right. just, it was a spoken word that I was your wife mm -hmm. and God added the love of God in our heart right. for each other by the Holy Ghost. Right. So that's how we became a couple. Mm -hmm. So although God Daryl knew that, but the one thing he told me before right. we got married, what did you say, babe? If we're not going to walk according to God's word and we ain't going to keep his commandments, I don't want to. He, he didn't want to marry me because he felt like we knew we wasn't educated at the time, right? Right. And we you had a high school. We didn't come from, we didn't come a, from a wealthy, spoon. <laughs> we didn't come from wealthy families. So if we were going to have anything in life. It was going to come by faith. It was going to come by faith. Yeah. So we started our journey 35 years ago walking by faith and it was a faith move to just get married right. and we're going to tell that little testimony just real quick mm -hmm. because it was really fun not funny it was really aw awful mm -hmm. because honey had just got a new job working in, uh, working we ain't gonna say where okay. had just got a new job mm -hmm. yeah i think you was still in the processing period but even before that we felt like god gave us the date to get married right and then leading up to that you got a new job we're so excited you was gonna make more money and then the very night of my bridal shower, yeah. you called me like 30 minutes now, before that shower. It was an honor to work at this particular job. Too. Yeah, it was yeah. a good job. It yeah. felt like it yeah, was for, really that area, area. Yeah. for that area. And you called me about 30 minutes before my bridal shower, and you told me you were laid off. Right. You got let go. Mm -hmm. So it was a faith move for me to even go to the bridal shower. Yeah. And it was even a bigger faith move for to us ahead, to get married. Get married. And so our whole journey has been by faith, and we'll share more and more and more as time goes along. But we're going to go ahead and go back to this lesson because we're going to share with you all how it is proven and how we actually raised our children this way and how we've lived by faith for 35 years. Well, we walk by faith and not, not by, by sight. sight. <laughs> so what we tried to do is just what God, that word, God, we found the word in every area of our life, whatever we needed. And we began to make that word work for us. And we let the word do the work. So we're going to go ahead. And the girl just got through sharing John 14 and 21. Yeah. Whosoever has my commandments and keep them. It is. He it is who love him. And then we'll be loved by the Father. So our goal in life was to keep God's commandments. 
And so we also knew that faith comes by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing yeah. the word of God. You know, that's what um, Romans 10 and 17 says. What? Mm -hmm. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And you ask yourself, how do you, you know, we know we hear and hear. We go to church every Sunday. Uh, we have our own personal Bible study through right. the day. You know, we listen to messages all the time. And then you go and Joshua says, uh, Joshua 1 and 8 says, uh, this book of the law mm -hmm. shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Thou that thou that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein mm -hmm. for then yeah. shall thou make thy way prosper and have good success yeah. so we knew this word had to be lived day and night it had to be in our eye gates all the time it had to be in our ear gates we had to be able to observe to do yes so we was like okay lord this means continual days and times in the word and we just try to do that word in their area right right you know this what's significant about that is that we made the transition from how we trained our children and put it in, we basically um put it in their eye gates and ear gates mm -hmm. and made them meditate on it because they don't know how right now as, as adults you have to intentionally do the right. same thing right keep it in your mouth keep it meditate on it day and night mm -hmm. so that you can observe to do according to what's written therein mm -hmm. Right, and the first thing I think that we felt like was very, very important was keeping our heart. Mm -hmm. You know, we want the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, as the scripture said. Yeah. So that means that was a lonely journey. Right. There wasn't a lot of friends. Right. There wasn't a lot of communication with people. Right. Because we didn't, we knew we were living off the promises of God, mm -hmm. so we couldn't take a chance mm -hmm. of talking about our neighbor. Right. Or having wrong seeds sown in our heart about anyone right. or any of that. Or even for the positive, right? Because the Bible said two of you agree is touching anything. Right. Because I can remember early in our journey, even before receiving you, I only had one person that I felt confident to go to to say, would you agree with me mm -hmm. concerning what I'm believing God for? And they had the, the wherewithal to just agree. They agreed with me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So in your life journey it's about those that would agree with where you where you're right. going with your faith other than that the Bible said have your faith before you and the Lord mm -hmm. right so uh, when you got uh, two get much reward for their labor of course a three four quarters not easily broken but how often do you really have that many people that can be on one accord with now right. like, again the whole body of Christ should be like this right mm -hmm. but in reality you know you have to guard your heart. Right. right. That's why you got to watch those prayer partners. Yeah. <laughs> you know, everybody got, I got, that's my prayer partner, that's my prayer partner. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure your prayer partner is really a good prayer partner. Right. You want to make sure their heart is, mm -hmm. is for God and that they're yeah. living according to the scripture. And you don't want your prayer partner to become a gossip partner. Right. They're just telling you business. They're just not only telling your business, mm -hmm. but bringing you trash. Yeah, bringing you trash. That now you have to cipher through your heart because you believe in God. Mm -hmm. You know, because when you believe in God, you don't want you don't anything or any little doubt or you said, man, I said this or I did that and now I got to go, I can repent. I mean, you're really fueling mm -hmm. the enemy because he is the accuser of the brethren in the first place. So every little, while you believe in God, every little fault, everything he's bringing, he's trying to challenge mm -hmm. God's grace for you to believe God despite you. And now you got despite the person that you let in on it and everybody else that's coming in, you know, that's was speaking negative. Right. So it's very important. But I think the main thing that we found out is we go back to your lesson with the children. Mm -hmm. He told us to bind it around their neck, write those scriptures and commandments on the doorpost. Because he wanted them to be able to observe and to do. Right. And so that's what we did in our own life. And I was telling you earlier, I said, you know, when we were in school, they told us to write our goals down. And the scripture says to write the vision and make it plain. Yes. But we were taught in school that if it wasn't written down, it's not a goal. Right. So I always say if it's not written down, it's not a vision. So first step. You got to write that vision. Write that vision and make it make plain. Make it plain because we both have to be able to read it and we both have to be a, have to agree upon it. Right. And what it mainly does, mm -hmm. it sets a target yes. to what we really believe in God for specifically. That is so awesome so that you brought important. that up. And, and we got to add this to the notes. Mark chapter 4 talks about one of the ways the enemy come against the seed of the word once it's planted mm -hmm. is the lust of another thing entering in, choking the word. Mm -hmm. 
to Rose Point, when we make that confession of faith or we write that vision and make it plain, we know we believe in God for and and and, on, and in turn we resist everything that's not that's not it. That that we, let's use a very good example. Mm -hmm. Our very well, the first house we had built. Yeah. Well, even the second house we had built. Right. I think we kind of gave in on the first house because mm -hmm. we were just so excited about just, getting a new house, yeah, right? But, yeah. But the second house, we was like, we're not giving in. Mm -hmm. And what was really funny that we I always wanted a Jack and Jill bathroom in my house, right? Because mm -hmm. I watched the, the Brady Bunch and I just thought it was so cool yeah. that, you know, the little Jack and Jill. And when we had this house built, we ended up with two Jack and Jills. Mm -hmm. And I said, mm, that really wasn't in my I don't remember saying to Jack and Jill, mm -hmm. but when I went back and I looked at our vision for our house, when I wrote how many square feet and what district I wanted it in, how many bedrooms I wanted, how many bathrooms and this and that, I had an S on the Jack, on and, the Jill. Jack and Jill's. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, yeah. that's why I ended up with two Jack and Jill's right. because I had an S. Well, you know what? That's so powerful. But I want to go back to the first house. Okay. And I'm and the reason why is because God, I'm going to show you how powerful words are. When God gave Rose this process of the confession of faith and write the vision and make it plain, we had in there a new house. Now, in our hearts, right. any house that we owned was be new to us. New to Even us. if we could have got the house that we were renting and the landlord was trying willing, to give it to us. trying to give it to us. <laughs> but we were talking about our new house. Just to say that I own a house. We own a house, yes. But you put in there new. We didn't, again, we didn't notice it. We didn't notice it. And then I said, honey, mm -hmm. this is why we built from the ground. Mm -hmm. I have the word new. Right. So again, mm -hmm. when you write the vision, you have a target prayer, you can be specific. And it even works when we believe in God for anything. Even, we can have testimony of testimony. Yeah. Even when we talk about one of the vehicles that we bought, right? You know, and I sent honey to the lot. I we because you know when I believe God, it takes me a while to come up with what I really want because I want to make sure I can tell the Lord what exactly what I want. That's so awesome. when I said, Lord, I want a red Durango. I wanted this, 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 this. How many miles? I want to. How much I want to pay per month? I want. I want. I want. I want. Right. And so when honey went to the car lot, mm -hmm. he rode around the car lot, and and the guy yeah. they said the guy came out. And what yeah. did you say? I, I I didn't even want to talk to him. You know what I mean? Because you didn't see what you was looking for. I didn't for, see what right? I looked. Cause see, this would happen. Backing up a little bit, we saw a commercial on TV, and so this particular um, car lot was talking about all the sales and everything that had going on. Now, now, granted, this was a Ford car lot, so I'm like, well, because they saying they have all these sales, what's going on? I'm gonna call them anyway and just see do they just happen to have a Durango on that parking lot? So I called them. So they want you to come down there, right? So I don't know if they really go, have integrity or if they lying to me. They just get me on the property and hope they can sell me anything. So they said they had one. So I said, okay, I'm, I'm coming on down there. So when I come down there, the guy I was supposed to meet with, I didn't even ask for him or nothing, right? But somebody come running out there uh, to come meet with me. And I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm just riding around here. Plus, if I was going to holler at somebody, I'd holler at this guy because this is the guy I talked to mm -hmm. on the phone. So anyway, I'm riding around the parking lot and everything else, and finally the guy comes up, the, the guy that I really was supposed to talk to, he came out there, and I was on my way. I was about to leave, because I didn't see uh, no Durangos on the parking lot. So I'm about to leave, and the guy come up on me, and uh, he said, oh, uh, Mr. Woodruff, you know, I'm so-and-so. Uh, when you talk to him on the phone, say, all right, how you doing, man? And like, I'm like, man, look, I'm about to leave because I came down here. You know, y'all said there's a Durango on the parking lot. You know what I'm saying? I'm down here. I don't see anything, so I'm about to leave, because I'm, I'm going to hold him to his word. You don't lie to me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But anyhow, he said, no, no, it is a Durango. It's on the other side. It's over here. So we went around there. Everything Rose confessed about that Durango, that's what it was. It was but first red. of all, <laughs> if it wasn't red, right. all you had to do was turn around anyway, right? Because mm -hmm. that wasn't it. Right. So that's why it's so important. important. What you say, what, what you, you write say, down. What you write down, you stick to it. Stick that to way it. you know it's God-given. Right. right, but you see me ready to resist everything that wasn't it. We see so many people allow their visions and what they believe in God for to be choked by the lust of other things entering in, 
uh, the Bible said the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things enter in and choke mm -hmm. the word. So sometimes you you trade off the trinkets versus the treasure that you believe in God for. Mm -hmm. Don't get distracted. Stick with what you said because God is teaching you to be like him. Follow after God as dear children follow after their parents. God is a God of his word. He want to show you how your words align with his word works. But you know what else I'm thinking about? Yeah. Let patience have his perfect, have a, have his perfect work. Yeah. Let it be whole and entire. Lacking nothing. It'd be exactly what you confessed, lacking nothing. Yeah. But that's how you know it's God given when it's come down to the very thing that you ask God for. Yeah. But you know what? It's never going to be less. Now, we've God had God do exceedingly abundantly above, right. but it's never going to be less. Right. Okay? So, if it's not written down, it's not a vision. That's right. Like your teacher told you, if it's not a, if it's not written down, it's not a goal. Right. According if to it's the not word, written down, it's not a vision. It's not a vision. Right. Because you both can't read it, and you two both can't run towards it. Right. 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 Okay. So let's mm -hmm. look at James. We'll come back to uh, having a renewed mind. But look at James two and fourteen. This is so powerful. Here, go ahead. Because go. faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Uh, you want to elaborate on the first one? I'll let you go. I got a scripture I want to share with you. <laughs> okay, I, I sent this to you so you can put it in your notes. Mm -hmm. But um, this scripture is coming out of 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 12. Now, Rose said, faith without works is dead. Because, see, you're aligned. When you're getting into faith for something, you're receiving the end of your faith. You see how the end of the faith is going to look, what you're going to do, mm -hmm. how you're going to live your life at that point. Uh, all the things that it's almost like you're promising God or you seeing what that's going to look like mm -hmm. at that end. So at the end, when God produce or allow you to observe to do according to what's written, there, there's going to come a time of doing. In other mm -hmm. words, faith without the work end of it is right, dead. Right. It don't matter Key that you word. spoke a house and work. you don't want to go down there and put the contract in. Right. Or you don't want to go down there and do the leg work. But not only that. Right. Everything begins where? In the spirit. In the spirit. So you have to, st the key word here is work. Right. A lot of times people want to pray and then they walk away mm -hmm. like there's nothing else to do. Right. There whatever is something work, to do. Whatever that work calls for, you got to be willing to do it. But the thing about it is, what's so powerful, and the scripture I'm, I'm, I'm going to share with you, what made the faith come alive is the fact that you committed to do the work. Yes. Because the Bible says faith without the works mm -hmm. is dead. All right. So what work is he talking about? Right? Watch this. Watch God. He'll receive your works in advance. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 8 and 12, he said, For if there be first a willing mind, first, right? He says, so when you go in, you shouldn't go in and you don't, you don't have a willing mind. It don't make sense to pray for something you ain't really willing to have in the first place. Why you got folks praying and believing God with you and you don't really care about right. that? Right, mm -hmm. the Bible said God will give you the desires of your heart. So get your will together. He said, "For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted." Right? What is accepted? The willing mind is accepted, according to that a man have. What you have at that point is you got your prayers and your willing heart and your willing mind to have what you believe in God for. Mm -hmm. Right? And not according to that he have not. So God is not even, he's not answering your prayer based on what you have. He don't look at your budget and say, you know what, you ain't got no money for don't do that. That's right. Oh, you ain't got this, that, and the third. You know, he's not judging it based on that. Mm -hmm. But he's saying, if you got a willing heart, right? Mm -hmm. Like, say, for you said, to one of the parts of my confession, not to elude from the houses, but he's, we believe God that more than enough money mm -hmm. comes into our house every seven days. Now that, but, but this is the doing of it, right? He said, to meet every need, pay every bill before time, have something to say for now and to be generous on every occasion. Now, what if you believe God and God say, okay, now I'm going to let more than enough come to your house these seven days. You don't say, you know what I'm saying? You don't pay your bills with it. Mm -hmm. You don't, uh, 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 what I say? Have more than enough to, mm -hmm. be, generous on every to, case. to be generous on every occasion. So when the occasion come up, you're not being generous. You're not doing the work, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, there comes a time after all right, you made the vision, you made it plain. It's starting to manifest, but you won't do you won't do the doing part. Right, because God, mm -hmm. just like we said, go back to the fact that He that has my commandment and keep them. Right. So God is going to give you the, the word. word. You got to keep that word that God gave you concerning mm -hmm. whatever you believe in God for. For right. example, right. if you believe in God for more money in your home, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna tell you, 
when we were believing God for more money, when you're raising four children mm -hmm. on one income, yeah. and some weeks you look at, you're not going paycheck to paycheck. You're going from paycheck to beyond to the next. You're looking at the next beyond paycheck. Right. And and you thinking about, Lord, we believe in God for money. So the first principle God said, Luke 6 and 38, he said, give. Right. And it shall be given unto you. Right. Yeah. So and you thinking, Lord, well, I don't have anything to give. Now, 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 when you think about it now, when we talk about the children, when we talk them about having a bountiful eye, it was so they mm -hmm. could give their bread to the hungry. Right. Right. So the first thing God go, told us to do is what? Give, give us a giving account. Give us a giving account. Yeah, get us a giving account together. That's the first. I mean, it doesn't matter how mm. much you have to give. It's right. just, I can remember one pastor said one time he was at an offering and they was giving. He knew he wanted to give. And he said he just tore the buttons off his shirt mm. and put it in the offering. <laughs> he was like, I got to give something. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. but and then I think he said somebody handed him some money. Matter Soma handed him some money to put mm -hmm. in the offering. But when God give you a seed, you don't eat the seed. Right. You plant the seed mm -hmm. so to bring forth a harvest. Right. So I can remember when, you know, we were always going to give and give mm -hmm. and give, and then you just feel like you're not. You know, you just see people giving all this money, and you want to give a lot, and you may not have five or ten dollars, but you got to remember, like the scripture said, when the lady gave the might. Right. She gave more than the mall. It's, and that's why God has it fair when he's give you, told you to give the 10% of the tithe. Because now it's fair for everybody. Because right. 10% of 100000 hits you as same as same it, it affects me as I, if I made 50000 I gave 10%. Right. So we both Somebody are Somebody made $10 and give 10%. They get 10%. Right. So God is just fair like that. Mm -hmm. So that's just an example of the word, doing the word and keeping God's commandment in an area. By finding that scripture mm -hmm. concerning giving, he may give you, and it doesn't mean you have to take it to the church too. I want to get that straight. Mm -hmm. Cause sometimes it's your neighbor down the street right. that doesn't have any food or mm -hmm. anything. God has give, told us, has get, had us to do that many times too. Mm -hmm. Take people clothes, take people food. Right. And we've been on the well, recipient end of that. What did we teach when we talked about teaching the children, right? Mm -hmm. After he told them how to prosper, later on he said, You've done this unto me when you go feed mm -hmm. the hungry, right. clothe the naked, visit them in the hospital, visit them that are in prison. It's these acts of love or what you said you would do with the mm -hmm. financial increase that you have in the kingdom of God. There's purpose behind it all. When God blessed them, their fishing business, it was so they can follow him. Right. So they went into doing the works of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But now they're empowered. Right. They're blessed mm -hmm. to, to be a blessing. I can remember even when, because, you know, we first moved to Texas, mm -hmm. you moved here without a job. Oh we brought God. three children to Texas without a job because yeah. it was during the Gulf War. During the Gulf War. And so a lot of jobs was not hiring because they didn't know the effects of the war was, you know, mm -hmm. was going to do for their business. So, but we did get blessed mm -hmm. like a couple, a week or so in where you did get a job. Right. And you only made $5. Right. I don't know. But how, <laughs> you know, but when we moved to Texas, and at that we time, brought bills with us, <laughs> and we brought bills with us. Yeah. But at that time, four hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. with five, it was a whole lot of money to pay for an apartment. Right. Not, to, not to mention feeding three kids at the time. Right. Mm -hmm. But we'll go more into our testimony mm -hmm. later. But just to say how we would give, and every, but we would still believe in God for a certain amount of money. We said, Lord, we thank you for making X amount of money a week. Then when you get to that, we said, Lord, we thank you for making X amount of money a week. And then we, when we get there, Lord, we thank you for making X amount of money a week. Right. Right. Specific. So as God, be, you know, you just start believing God. Mm -hmm. it, the giving scripture says, given it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Mm -hmm. Press down, check together, run over. God will cause men to give into your bosom. So when you don't just look for your neighbor, your job. Somebody own that business. Right. God can cause them to give exceedingly abundantly above. That's a raise. That's right. an increase. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Favor, yeah. favor is gonna start. I was thinking as you were saying that not only will we start believing God for income itself, we'll start believing God for the end of our faith, which may be the house or whatever. However, God do it, He do it. He does it. Right. Right. So with that in mind, let's look at Romans twelve and one, because mm -hmm. it says, "Do not be conformed." To this world, but be ye transformed yes. by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Right. Right? 
So a lot of times when we look at what we're going through in our lives, in our daily lives, we try to do things the way the world does it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But there's no power in that. There's no power in the world system. There's no power in the world system. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times God will ask you to do something that don't make sense. Yeah. But you got to trust him. Because that's what whatever the commandment says, that's what he's going to manifest. That's right. That's what he's going to manifest. Mm -hmm. So you get in the word, no matter what your situation is, you find a commandment on that, mm -hmm. right? Write it down. You write it down. Mm -hmm. That's what you're going to going to confess. You're going to confess that scripture day and night. Right. And you're going to, because faith comes by hearing and hearing, and as you meditate. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe next week or the next lesson, mm -hmm. we'll go into some of our, share some of our confessions of faith. Yes. How That's powerful. It has, <laughs> as honey said, off the, it has grown mm -hmm. over the years, pages and pages. Because I remember our first confession of faith. You'll tell them. <laughs> <laughs> our first confession of faith, I can remember back about 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. When we first moved to Texas, we started going to this to our church. And I was walking by the table. You know how they give out little handouts or uh, things to uh, inspire you. you know, and, you and they had Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28 and 1, but they had it in the uh, in English terms. If you fully obey the, the, word, the word of the Lord that God, all these blessings are going to come upon you, right? Mm -hmm. Blessed in the city, blessed in the suburbs, or, you know, all these scriptures, mm -hmm. you know, about blessings. Your storehouse will be blessed. You're blessed. You get to become a one to register 57. All these scriptures about the blessings of uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 1. Just go through it and read it. And so I picked up that paper mm -hmm. and I took it home. And I just start every night, every day, I would read that scripture. Because he, he promised that your storehouse would be blessed. Yeah. Your barns would be blessed. Mm -hmm. Everything you put your hands to do is going to be blessed. Right. So I would just read it every day. That was, that was my first. Your kitchen cupboards and your refrigerator. Refrigerator is blessed. Okay. <laughs> so I just begin, because you know, I'm feeding my family mm -hmm. on this $5 an hour job. And just confessing that, due to Romney 28 and 1, all those scriptures, we just saw I saw how God began to just bless my family. Hey, but it wasn't just feeding our family off of five dollars now. We feed company. They yes. come over for dinner. Feed company. <laughs> like, like, help our parents. Say, yeah, help our parents and do whatever we had to do. And God was just blessing us. And when we came to Texas, we came with a, uh, a significant amount of bills. Uh, yeah, we came with, well, yeah, because we had pastored at the time. And we had pastored in the in a theater, movie theater, and we had purchased those chairs, but we purchased the theater seats in our name. Right. And so that was even miracle. That, that yeah, and that was a miracle how that happened. I, I'm just gonna tell that real quick, and okay. then we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let you pray. We're gonna go, you know, cut the tape for the day. But I can remember walking around in that parking lot. And I was just in the apartment parking lot, and I was just kind of praying over the family, and I may have just did the confession as well, and. I was just like, Lord, what are we going to do about these seats? We can't afford to pay for these seats. You know, we got this rent we're paying $400 a month. We got three kids. Mm -hmm. Honey, I'm making $5 an hour. And I have a, happen to have my phone. And we got a, I got a phone call. No, not my phone, but I, I went in the house and got a phone call. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was the people from the chair. No, it was Mama. Uh, yeah. And Mama said they looking for you guys because they want to open up the theater in DeWitt and they want those, they want to get those chairs. They want to buy the chairs from you. <laughs> and I was like, y'all can have those chairs. Yeah. So that's how God mm -hmm. resolved that debt for the chairs. And I think we hadn't even been in Texas a month. Right. They're not even thirty days. Yeah. And God got that debt of the chairs mm -hmm. off of us. It it speak volumes when you when you believe in God for something, and then you do. What God tell you to do, despite of how it looks, because I tell you, I've, I know we're about to pray and we're gonna shut it down. But I got to tell this part before we ever moved to Texas. Rose had the whole house confessing that they about to move to Texas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, and just in case I doubt it, you know what I'm saying. Right. So I came, came up here and went to school and everything else, and I was busy back and forth coming back home. And I'm gonna tell you, it was some down days where I was like, you know, we're just gonna settle in. Because things are expensive in Texas compared to Arkansas, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, man, you know, we down there paying $150 for rent. We talking about going up there and quadrupling <laughs> almost what we pay for rent. 
You know, and and and, and, and with and three kids, three kids, and and yeah, no job, no job, and everything else. Let me go on back down here. You know what I'm saying? But see, I was I was already ahead of him. Yeah, she was already ahead. Of him. I said I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna quit my job before he finishes school, mm -hmm. so he won't have a reason. Yeah, we don't have we won't have a reason to stay here. I tell you, look, we went to Texas. We didn't have a job, no credit. I didn't even have a five dollar an hour job at that time when yeah. we moved. God gave us favor the whole way. When, not only did we come down there with the four hundred dollar note for the chairs at the at the gym, at the at, from, from the theater, the three kids, a wife. We went and moved into an apartment. We didn't even have any credit, but it just happened to be the apartment that I stayed in when I was going to school, and I was able to go down there and tell them, "Hey, I I, I stayed with y'all during this time. Mm -hmm. Would you know trying to move into the area?" And God gave us favor for them to just let us. Live in those same apartments, mm -hmm. not the actual apartment, you know, but the, the apartment complex. complex. Yes, as a result of the fact that we I mm -hmm. lived there, so God had paid all the way and everything. Right, and this right. whole, the whole, if we just tell you everything. But you know what they say, stories say, stories sell, and uh, facts just tell. So we didn't just want to just tell you faith. We want to share some stories with you. Right. If this has been uh, interesting to you, and 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 our format and the way we come at you. It's what you like. Leave us a little note down there in the, in the, uh, description. In the description down mm -hmm. there. Let us know that you're liking the content that you're receiving from us. Yeah, and click that like button mm -hmm. and hit the notification bell so you'll know every time we uh, do a video. And subscribe. But, you know, as, but next, when we come back, we're going to share more about how to get your prayers answered. But first of all, you got to remember that faith is worked by love. And love is having God's commandments and keeping them. Because if you love him and you keep his commandments, he will manifest himself. You want to pray, babe? Yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that your word does not go out void. It accomplishes that which you sent it out to do. It prospers in the thing to where you sent it. And you uphold all things by the word of your power. We thank you that your word is quick, it's powerful, it's sharp, and it is two is sword. Piercing to the divine, the son of soul, and spirit of joy, and modern is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. We know that you uphold all things by the word of your power. We thank you for yes, your God. word. We know that it don't go out void. Your people are going to be blessed by it. It's going to empower their life. And we're going to hear testimony upon testimony of how they wrote that vision, made it plain, how they resisted everything that wasn't you, and no lust of other things entered in and choked that word, and they came out with a hundredfold return. On your word, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. And we cannot wait to hear your testimonies of your answer prayer. But remember always that you are happy, happy healthy, healthy, wealthy, fit, and, and forgiven. forgiven.